In this movie, you learn to create light cycle trails. Light cycle trails are essentially animated sweeps, much like you see in motion graphics animation. It is usually easy when the sweep is going in one direction, such as the case of animating a box or a cylinder's height. However, it is somewhat more difficult to animate a sweep along a path. In 3ds Max, you have a couple of ways to achieve that. Using the Select from Scene dialog, select both light cycles and both paths, and then isolate the selection. When you consider a nonlinear path, as you have in this scene, you can create an animated sweep using the Path Deform modifier you'd need a 3D piece of geometry to sweep it along, such as a simple box. The geometry would need to have a certain amount of detail to work properly. With the mesh selected, you can apply a path deform modifier to it. If the position of the path is important, and it is in this case, you would want to use the world space path deform modifier as opposed to the object space modifier. After selecting the path in the scene, you can choose to move the mesh to it. From there on, you can animate the percent value to move and deform the box along the path, or you can use the stretch option, which would be more useful to create a light cycle trail. Notice, however, how the deformation affects the quality of the mesh. You'd want to ensure the mesh has enough detail to work properly. This presents us with a limitation, because even with the maximum divisions of 200 segments, you still might not get smooth turns. Another problem is banking. You can rotate the trail to bank with the light cycle, but that would be global and mess up the state of the light cycle when it's supposed to be upright. The solution is to use a different method, based on a compound object called Loft. Ironically, Loft is quite old technology in 3ds Max. It's actually a modeling tool that's as old as the software itself. However, with a bit of ingenuity, it can be quite powerful, as you will see. To create a Loft, you need two components, a path and a 2D shape to act as a cross-section. A path you already have. You need a cross-section, which is in effect a rectangle. Zoom in near the start of the blue path and create a rectangle. Make it quite thin with a width of about 0.5 and a length of about 23. This will make the trail about as high as the rear wheel of the light cycle. At this time, the pivot point is at the center of the rectangle. You need to place it at its base so that the trail doesn't eventually sink underground. With the rectangle selected, go to the Hierarchy panel and choose Affect Pivot Only. Use the Align tool to align the object onto itself, and choose to align in the Y axis only, the current object's pivot point to the target object's minimum Y coordinate value. This brings the pivot point to the rectangle's base. Disable Effect Pivot Only mode. Select the blue path and go to the Create panel under Compound Objects. Click Loft. Since the path is already selected, choose the Get Shape Creation method and click the rectangle you just created. Go to the Modified panel. If you need to, Press F4 to see the loft's underlying geometry. There's quite a bit of detail there. You can decrease the detail where it's not needed. Expand the skin parameters rollout and set the shape steps to zero. This reduces the detail around the cross section. Since the cross section is rectangular, it doesn't need the extra detail. Notice how you have nice detail around the turns. In effect, you have five divisions between any given two path vertices. 
You can increase or decrease this number, but four or five steps should work fine for our purposes. We'll get to animating the loft in a moment, but before that, let's see how we can make it bank for the turns to match the behavior of the light cycle. Press F3 to go to wireframe mode. In the path parameters rollout, click and drag the path percent value spinners and notice the little yellow tick that travels along the path. Go to about 10% of the path. This roughly coincides with the very first animation key you set for the upright light cycle state. Use the Get Shape button again and click the original rectangle cross section. Notice the extra divisions that take place. Repeat the procedure at around 26% of the path. Again, extra divisions take place. The insertion of these two additional cross sections ensure that the trail stays upright before and after these two percentage points. Go to about 13.5% of the path. Insert another cross section there, but this time you need to rotate it to initiate the banking. Expand the loft modifier and choose Shape. Select the shape you just inserted at 13.5% and rotate it. To make the rotation more accurate, scrub the animation to the point where the light cycle's rear wheel coincides with the rectangular shape. Switch back to shaded mode and perhaps remove edge faces mode as well. Rotate the shape so that the trail is banking properly with the light cycle. Scrub to about frame 56. Notice the banking needs a bit of adjustment. Exit Shape Sub-Object Mode. Change the percent value to match the position of the rear wheel. You may find it easier to do so in wireframe mode, so keep that F3 key handy. Insert another cross section. You may find it easier to select the rectangle from a list using the H key. Rotate the shape in place at the shape sub-object level to match the banking of the light cycle. Once you have adjusted the light trail banking for the first turn, you will need to do the same for all other turns on the path. Of course, since there are two light cycles, you need to create two trails and adjust their banking accordingly. So go ahead and do that and we will meet in the next movie where you learn to animate the lofts.